welcome to this integration tutorial. Vue now supports the automatic creation of materials for Redshift when converting a view scene. In this video, we will look at how to do this in Maya. To use this new feature, you will need Redshift 3.0.46 or up with the new open color IO color management and Maya 2020 and up. I've opened the view scene in Maya with the integration plugin and I've created a camera and a dome light with a view HDRI that I exported from view standalone. I've also added an environment fog and scattering shader in the Redshift render settings for a bit of atmospheric depth, but of course all of this is purely optional. Speaking of render settings, we must ensure that Redshift is the currently selected render engine before we convert any object. This is required so that the view plugin knows for which render engine it should create materials during the conversion process. To now convert the objects, you just need to open View's world browser and select any object you would like to convert. In this case, the plane with an attached material ecosystem. Right click on the object and choose Convert to Maya object. In the conversion dialog, you can choose between different material conversion methods. Please note that when you have multiple objects selected, these options will be applied to all selected objects. For individual settings per object, you would need to select and then convert each object separately. You can choose between baking materials and converting materials. Baking is required when the object uses completely procedural or partially procedural materials that were designed with view or plant factory material nodes. You can choose which channels to bake in the list below. But I know that my object uses bitmap based materials only, so I can choose convert materials. This will simply dump the existing image files into the project path defined here and it will not rebake the textures. A special feature in Redshift is the Redshift sprite node, which can be used instead of an alpha channel. The sprite node renders tremendously faster with many overlapping alpha channels, for example with leaves on plants. But it has a few limitations which are described in Redshift's official documentation and it can only be used once in material. So there might be certain scenarios where a traditional alpha channel might be the better choice. But in general, we recommend using the sprite node for best rendering performance. Finally, we also recommend creating mesh instances for the ecosystem conversion because they offer much better performance than regular instances. And if the items you loaded into the ecosystem were set up to use animation in view, the converted instances will also include animation with either a bone rig or a point cloud in the converted object. So once everything is set up, click convert. The conversion can take a few minutes depending on the number of objects and materials, but usually it's quite fast. After the conversion, the converted objects are placed on a new layer in the world browser and they're hidden from render. You can always revert them with a right click and after reverting them make further edits and then you can reconvert. But if you don't need any more changes, you can close the view scene because it is no longer needed. All objects are now Maya objects with proper Redshift materials. In the Hypershade editor, we can check the created materials and we'll see that all texture maps are connected to the correct slots, including properties such as translucency or two-sided materials or the sprite node. Now we can render the scene with Redshift. Here's another tip for converting large-scale scenes. With hundreds of thousands of instances or more, a converted scene might exceed what your GPU or even Redshift can handle. So if the scene fails to render or it renders very slowly, you can fix this by replacing all converted objects with Redshift proxies. In the outliner, select the mesh, unhide it and export it as a proxy object through the button on the Redshift shelf. Make sure to set the file type to Redshift Proxy. Then add a Redshift Proxy object to the scene and in the Proxy Properties, load the object you just exported to disk. 
you can now select both the proxy object and the mesh instance object in the outliner and add the proxy to the mesh object with this button over here. The original mesh can then be unlinked from the instance object. So by replacing all meshes in the instance object with proxies, even large scale scenes can be rendered successfully. In an upcoming release, we will automate this process so that the plugin will create proxies for you during scene conversion. So look out for more conversion features in the future. Thanks for watching and happy rendering. Thank you.